anyone like that, you know, Jaya Tirtha, we're not starting out like that. We're starting out with Prabhupada. Jai. And that's a major distinction that can't, we cannot overlook, I think. Okay. You know, that is the mood that I had here in Sacramento. I always referred to Srila Prabhupada's lectures, conversations, writings, con uh, uh, letters, but it never went anywhere with the disciples of the ISKCON gurus, I mean the initiated gurus. They always found ways to bypass that. And in this way, the whole thing presently is a disaster, you know, because they are the so-called leaders and when you introduce these things, they think Prabhupada is dead, he's no longer important. You know, they sing all kinds of tunes at the programs. So it's a disaster, yeah. you know. And it's difficult something tune, that, difficult tune sometimes. Yeah, very all difficult. kinds of tunes, very difficult tunes people cannot follow. They cannot follow, they cannot follow. Yeah, it's like you have to be an Apsara or something, or Gandharva to, uh, to follow their chanting. Influence of the Vrindavan Babas, maybe. Yeah, all, the, all these, you know. In Gali, also Sahajas. Basically, it's Sahaja because only a Sahaja will make up his own melody or sing some melody other than the melody of the Acharya. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things with me was I never. Uh, uh, I never chanted. I I was just observant for the past 10 years. I was observing all these people learning all different kinds of tunes, all different kinds of melodies. I mean, wow. You know, I never, I was just observing, you know, from the background. So therefore, can we resolve that before we do anything, maybe even a week before we chant ourselves, we should make a commitment to hear how about chanting whatever it is we want to chant. Yeah. If it's a Hare Krishna mantra, find Prabhupada chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Memorize his intonation. Memorize the way his inflection. Memorize the way he chanted. And that will deliver mm -hmm. us and others. Chai. Otherwise, we're just doing the same old, same old, which Ramachandra very uh, eloquently uh, stated. Does it make sense? You like that, Chidananda? Yeah, I mean, you know, look, I mean, Chidananda, you and I have been in this movement tune. for many years, decades, but we're still yes. neophytes when it comes to have, having church on only Prabhupada Melody. Right, right. So that's what should be our commitment. Yeah, because as far as I'm concerned, I'm only interested in the melody of Prabhupada being used, World Sankirtan, and in our movement of the 10,000 year association. Because after these guys are dead and in their graves or samadhis or whatever they're going to be in, after that happens, then what? We have, we have to, um, we have to continue this movement after these ego structured egomaniacs are dead. So we're not trying to make up or cherish what we learned over the years. We need to create what we want people to hear for the next 1,000 years. And my request. Like in the Christian. He said, it's also they got the you know, Jesus Christ original Christianity and then all other sects that, that came after. With yeah. the, the one in uh, Russian Christianity is, is more original, I think. Talk. And then it came. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, talking about. You know, you know, at one time, there were five popes in the world. You know? Uh -huh. the, the Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, the um, Roman Catholic, of course, the Orthodox. Egyptian, and I think Syrian, yeah. they all had their own popes. 
Yeah. Some more original than others, like the Orthodox. Well, more exactly, original. exactly. They have different Bibles and different scriptures. Yeah. And I think that the least authentic is the Protestants, for the most part, you know, because they just pick and choose. Catholic Church is good, but it is structured for politics, not for religion, not for spiritual life. Hmm. So we we have to neglect it. That's so, the church must we have to must be neglected by us, right? And as far as Rama Jesus Chandra. is concerned, the only Jesus I would recognize is a Jesus which is a member of the poverty bow of poverty Essenes who are strict vegetarians. Yeah. Well, all all prophets should should talk the same language because there's only one God. Well, that we be, know. Yes. Yeah, it can't be one religion say this and other. Religion so, says if there's only one God, then why so many people killing each other with their different views of God? You see what I mean? Christianity slaughtered more people than any other group of people on earth. I mean, continents full of people were destroyed. So, uh, talking about original tunes, or, or, original books, go ahead, someone was speaking? Yes. I cut them off. Uh, uh, I was just mentioning that we can't see Prabhu Narayan this some strange things. Not his. We can't see him. No, no, Prabhu. We cannot yeah. see you. Your face is a ghost. You will. A you ghost. will in a moment. Okay. okay. We will I'm see him gonna... in a moment. That's you good. Put a picture of you. <laughs> it's okay. Anyway. Ah. Yeah. I'm here, as you can tell. Uh huh. He's multitasking. Like we do. Yes, I'll be yes. with you in a second. I just had to no doing something. I don't want to make that part of my. It has not really started, really. We are just. Anyways, uh, we were talking about Prabhupada's original books, original tunes, original everything. So yeah. Today, when I woke up this morning, someone messaged me. And they said, Ronald, I'd like to sponsor 100 cases of, or not 100 cases, sorry, 100 copies of original Bhagavad Gita's and wow. Science hey. of Self-Realization. Without, wow. without you asking. Without you asking. Without got... me asking. And guess. Wow. Yeah, without me asking. And hey. guess what he saw. He saw, hey. he saw one of my videos that I made on Facebook and wow, it's great. and this is the video he saw. You see this video? I see. Uh, did I get that? I don't think so. Oh, anyways, I was making a comparison with the edited Gita, the yolo covered one versus the 1972 edition mm -hmm. here. You see here? I see. Send, so, me, send it to me. Yeah. So this video has gotten more than 10,000 views. 10,000 views, huh? 10,000 views, 373 shares. You see it? Is that, is that, is that, is that recent? recent? No, this video was done January 14th, 2020. Year ago. Ah, oh, January, okay. Yeah. Fantastic. And this person, this person saw this video and called me and said, Ronald, I want to sponsor 100, 100 copies of original wow. 1972 Gita's. And then original, original 1972 uh, uh, science of self-realization. Mm. So, wonderful. So in this way, you can see if we keep everything original, Prabhupada, original tunes, original books, mm. there's already so much mercy in it. So we should we should never yes, change yes. anything. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Because this is a real thing. Yeah. 
I just woke up and someone called me and it's close to $800 worth of books, probably $900 worth of books. It's a lot of money. Wonderful. And this person doesn't even know me, you know, like. Yeah, yes. So it's, it's interesting. Yes. It's interesting to say the least, you know, keeping everything original, simple, and uh, it has this wonderful spiritual merit. But, you, but you, can, the... you can sell it. You can sell the books. No. You have, you want funds. Uh, no, he wants to donate. So I'll donate at the temples. Whoever is interested. No, well, I mean, Prabhupada said, don't give. Because they, have, they must give something back. And yeah. You, they, they will think it's, it's a valuable thing, you know. Yeah. They so, don't sell it expensive. Uh, it, it's called lo loving exchange. Yes. Loving yeah. You give and then and you ask. With the money, you, you can do other projects. You see? Yeah. For life. You hand them the book and then you ask, say, hey, you know, we're distributing these, but they're not selling. Therefore, donation, whatever you can give. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Whatever you can. So, you know. Because we need money. So right. you can see the power of the original books, you know. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> You can call me for anything else, just, just to distribute the books. That's you know what I say, in, in the future, in the future, you can have a project, like a, I said, temple, and we have to discuss it, and people will come forward. Yeah. And I mean, you it, prove that you will manage it's very, it it's very mystical, to say the least, you know. Uh, just several months ago, someone called me and gave $1,300 in donations for... Uh, for, a for a temple or a center. So it's That's very mysterious. Wonderful. Yeah, so. So may, may I make an observation? Go ahead, please. My observation is because of the uniqueness and purity, not of ourselves, but of our concept and preaching, Krishna is directing them to come with that money for you. Jai. Yeah. You get the point? Yes. And I say, why did that person give the money? We don't know. I don't know. Yes, she would not give unless Paramatma induced her to give. Right. Right. From the heart. Exactly. I mean, that Paramatma induced her to go to the sweet shop and buy sweets. Right. But in this case, Paramatma induced her to uh, yeah. donate money for books without her really knowing what will actually happen when she does that. Right. Right. She is just saying, I want to do that. So that impulse is Paramatma's pushing. Jai. That's the secret. That was an encouragement for you. Yeah. So anyhow, Go ahead. what I want to say is we shouldn't be doing what they do on the pick. We should not be trying to hit people up. What we should be doing is simply preaching purely and watching to see what people are then directed to do from their hearts by Lord Krishna. Paramatma. Yes. Does that make sense? And it's much nicer than just going out and on the pick. Yes. Also Maybe the the getting or, money. Or, or the organization have got so bad reputation nowadays. Yeah. Internet is revealing everything. So they are looking for someone to give a donation. Some people are many people have got much money they don't know what to do with the money. Well, yes, but there's another factor in there, Chidananda Prabhu. It's not that they have money, they want to do something, get it, they could spend it for the, the sense gratification or buy a car or something like that. Yeah. What I'm thinking is they hear us and that gives them an impulse to give money for the unchanged Bhagavad Gita because of Ramachandra's type of preaching, which makes it clear that that will produce a very uh, especially good result on the planet Earth. Yes. Wow. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? And I think that's the way Ramachandra's mind has worked all along, and that's the success of his book distribution, is that he's always doing the right thing while I'm trying mm -hmm. to force the outcome. He does the right thing, and then the right thing happens. Sure. You know, it's yeah. going to happen. Do you like that idea? Definitely. So we're not. We're yeah. not. It's going, we're not doing what this guy does, which is going out and demanding or trying to get mm. money. And that—that that was what uh, 
a lot of the Godemoff people did. One of the Godemoff guys sets mm-hmm. himself up as a guru or something like that. And then he sends all his disciples out door to door to beg for rice, beg for money, beg for dal, beg for, you know, mm-hmm. mung beans, beg for spices. So that begging has nothing to do with devotional service. It does in a very indirect and, and not particularly glorified, glorious way. But the, what, if this process of do the right thing and the right occur, result will occur yeah. is our leap of faith. Our leap of faith. Just consider Srila Prabhupada when he first came to America and started preaching and to devotees, he made a leap of faith that if I speak the truth, it will go yes. well, the outcome will be good. And what way? Oh, I'll get some money. No, the outcome will be good. Oh, they brought flowers. Or the outcome will be good. Oh, they're renting a storefront, they matchless gifts. Or oh, it's going to be good. They brought vegetables and spices from the Indian store. Now I will show them how to cook. And then by showing how to cook, it made the movement of food into a cooking movement. Uh, I probably had said something to that effect, that this is the, uh, the Vaishnava Sampradaya, the way we practice it is, oh yeah, it's called the kitchen religion. Yes. Kitchen yes. religion. Yes. So that's what happened when like, people like, Jamona whatnot tasted the Prabhupada's cooking, then they bring bags of mung beans and bags of rice. And why not? Why not? The impulse was there, the taste in the prasad was there, so why not bring ingredients? It's not that you have to say, now could you please bring some ingredients? I can't cook, I'm going to go hungry if you don't bring me my ingredients. No, he ignored all of that, and he just did the right thing. So we, we, can't see you like we, can't see. we need to become like that also. We need to become selfless. No, not true. We cannot see you. We cannot see you. Your hand oh. is blocking. Oh, oh there you go. My, That's okay. That's okay. My thumb got in the way. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Chai. I drink to the kombucha. Because the world is, is watching. The which? I'm going to leave a minute. Uh, no problem. No problem. Okay. So uh, let's continue. Now, Ramachandra, I like what you're saying, and maybe get some, what is your intuition, your feeling of that woman giving the money? I was at work, and you know, this person called me and said, I want to donate something towards a temple or a center. I got a flyer from you some, you know, eight, nine months ago. And I'm like, oh, really? And I never asked for the amount or anything like that. I said, you know, why do you want to give? Or I, you know, I want to give because I know that you use it properly. So well, that, you see, that's what I'm talking about. She is convinced by your purpose, not by your questions and asking and demands for money. Yeah. She senses that you're good. She wants to give to the good. Right. Jai. So that was, uh, that was interesting. And then another lady called. She wanted to give 5000 something dollars. And she said, I'll give later. I'm like, all right. I never, I never really, I never asked for the amount. They volunteer, you know. I never asked for any amount or anything like yeah. that. So in this way, sh- she's going to be giving later. Great. Well, now we need to have, or do we already have, a platform for then getting the money, but also spending the yeah. money on certain right. things. Right, right. Like we need to spend it to develop our website, I think, in right. one way or another. Right, and right. We need, we, we need to spend also, uh, we need to spend for a more sophisticated Zoom conferencing system. Yeah, yeah. It may cost thousands of dollars. We don't right. Know. Right. But if they come with thousands of dollars, can you imagine if we have a more sophisticated system, then people will donate more thousands of dollars. <laughs> right. Jai. We don't need to worry about 
money. You know what Prabhupada said about Krishna? What is it? What, do you they'll probably know the quote better than I do? Krishna is not, not a poor man. Did he say something to that effect? Yes, yes. Yes, Krishna is not a poor man. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So Krishna has all the resources. And then we say, well, and devotees used to ask this question back at the beginning of the movement. And we were trying to open a temple. There was a struggle of getting the money, getting the, uh, finding a place. I mean, everything we did was a big, big struggle. Mm -hmm. And the devotees came to Prabhupada and said, well, you say Krishna is not a poor man. So why aren't we getting more money from Krishna to do this? You know, Prabhupada's response was, and this is our guiding light, he knows what you would do with it. <laughs> if Krishna just gives you, gives you a armored car full of money, what will we do? The whole process is doing something worthy and then Krishna will fund that worthy thing. Sure. Does it, does it make sense? Do you like that, Chidananda? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's very different than the way we I was thinking uh, this morning, Prabhu. This guy does not taught us like that. This guy taught us go in the pick, sell something, get some money, and you'll be benefiting people. And of course we would. Any money we get, even by lying about why we're getting it, that benefits the person that gives. But look what it does to the future of our movement. We become reputed, oh, airplane, air, airport, they take 20 bucks and run in the bathroom and I have to catch my plane instead of giving me change. That's what Chaturani used to do. One so, comment. Please. Okay, I, I, have I said enough to confirm my appreciation and awe and reverence of your interaction with that that created that desire in that woman to give to the good that she knows will occur. Now, if, when she gives the money, the real question is doing the good, not just yeah. spending it. You know? Are you Go ahead, Chiran the Prabhu, you want to say something? Yes. Go ahead. I was thinking, you know, uh, because the movement was so rich, we had such, such a lot of assets, properties. Uh, didn't that uh, make people, envious people, greedy to grab these assets? I mean, um, is, is assets in a society good? If, uh, if there were no assets, they wouldn't be so well, interested. Why not? Why not? It depends on who owns the assets. Right. That's that's the main question. Who owns the assets? <laughs> Krishna Krishna's, owns the assets. Krishna stu Bhagavan Svayam. Krishna owns the assets. That's why I keep mentioning yeah. how our Varnashram system could very well we need to do research into Jagannath Puri. Yeah. How they managed before the British came and before the Mughals came. How did they manage that Lord Jagannath owns everything and everyone else works for Jagannath and nobody is getting rich off of the land except Jagannath? Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, can it, can, it can be uh, done. Our, Amir? No, no gold. To our, all historians are corrupt, so corrupt that they don't even I'm going to point out these things. Yeah, yeah. Before Mughals, before before Historians. the English, British, how these things are happened. I don't quite, what are you, I don't know what you are referring to. What you're saying sounds impeccably perfect. Can you repeat? You I mean, gosh, Prabhu, can you repeat more clearly, please? Go ahead. I am saying that, what are you mentioning that we have to do a, do a research I am saying that yeah. our historians are so corrupt that we don't even read these things. How these things are uh, happening Happen. uh, before the Mughals, before the British, so perfectly. 
Okay. We don't have to rely on the historian. You're saying they completely. don't acknowledge the fact how perfect it was. What did I say rely on the history? I'm not saying copy it. I'm saying just study it. How did they do it? How yes. did they, who, who, where did the grain come from the plant? Did the farmer keep it or was it brought to the temple and then distributed on the basis of need? You see, how, how, what did they do? Did they sell the produce from the farm or did they give it all to the temple and it was turned into prasadam and distributed to all yes. the farmers? That we need to know. Not that we're trying yeah. to create something that could become corrupt, quite the opposite. We want to create something that will be corruption proof. That yes. will be so yes. nice. You see, if I don't own anything in mm. the Varnashram society, in the Varnashram village or village, it's bigger than a village, but if I don't own anything, then I don't have to worry about cheating because how will I cheat? How, how do I yeah. cheat if I don't own anything? Right, right. Yeah, we have to study. I can that. only cheat. I can only cheat if somebody owns and I take what he has. It's not so much that I don't own, but if you own and you have something and I don't have as much, I might want to take it sneakily from you. Oh, he's left his rice barrel out. I'm going to scoop out some rice because he has more rice than I do. Well, that that is automatic recipe for failure. An even bigger recipe for failure is he has more rice than I have. Let me see what I can give him so that he will give me some rice. Bargaining or making a cash system. That's disastrous. Because everything belongs to Krishna. How do I buy and sell? Buying and selling is a property of the thief, not of the Lord Krishna. How is the Jagannath Puri system right now? Has it changed? How is the Jagannath Puri system right now? Has it changed after the... Oh, oh yes. The yes, when the British came in, they went to all the mm -hmm. farmers and said, you fools, you are busy worshipping that wooden idol in the big building over there. And all those priests are busy taking everything you make and do. You should have independent ownership of all of your farms. And then you can do business and buy and sell and become prosperous in that way. So they had no choice. They were under the British. So they did it. Yeah. The result was now they're all incredibly poor. I see. Whereas before they had yes. so much. Yes. More than they had, There was more prasadam coming from the temple than any community could completely eat. I see. Yeah. There was also there the was, Islam. There was Islamic more cloth that... than anyone could completely wear. He said, well, what about the money? Well, what are you going to buy with it? Well, I want to go gambling. Oh, no, no, you can't do that. <laughs> no, what do you want money for if you don't need to buy anything? Just like a child in the house. He doesn't need cash to get dinner. He doesn't have to go in sit in his high chair and then give a dollar to his mom to feed him. Yes. She feeds him because she's the mother. Mm -hmm. And if she says to the little boy, now because we, you've eaten so nicely, would you like to help mommy wash the dishes? He says, I'll be delighted to wash the dishes. Not because he owes it, but because he wants to participate. Make sense? I, I can tell you like that. <laughs> One comment? And, and yes, go ahead. How much? Are yes. You? Yes, go ahead. Yes. Uh, do you yeah. yeah, this is uh, the, one of the main problems of ISKCON and other societies also. The, the thing that temples or book publishing is uh, very profitable. It's, it's just a lot of money. And these, these people got tempted to get control of that. And uh, now it, it's, they say these temples are mine. The, the work labor force that we can attract, well, it's mine. How and about, I'm going to profit from it. How about put clear God-derived laws in place yeah. to prevent that? 
They yeah. broke the law. Our Krishna's law. They broke Krishna's law. Prabhupada told them what Krishna wanted. They said they wanted to do something else. Well, that's very typical sure. of the fallen conditioned soul, isn't it? Krishna wants something and then you want something else. That's why we have four regulated principles, because everybody wants something else. Everybody, oh, I want to eat meat, I want to gamble. Mm. But um, so how did Krishna Prabhupada arrange? He arranged that the books would not be owned by the temples ever. The temples mm -hmm. would not have any way to print or publish books. Yes. The BBT Trust would print and publish books, and they would sell the, they, the books to the temple. And the temple would buy the books from the BBTI, by BBT. They BBT. would buy the books. So they would say, we want to distribute books. Let me go to the BBT. Instead of owning the BBT, the BBT would say, how many books would you like? Here's the price. This is what you have to pay. They pay the money. Out of that money, 50%, I believe, was given to print more books. Because if you make a profit selling to the temples, then when they buy the books, you have money left over. So 50% goes to print more books. 25% to open new temples, build and, or open new temples. And 25% of, what was that? What was the other 25%? Mayapur project. Mayapur no, no. project. No, there was nothing like that. Yeah, sure. So, so Krishna Mayapur project would probably make this rule. Uh, I, I think a fifty percent of no, no. Um, I forget. I'll I'll look it up. But no, I think it was maybe to the Mayapur to, project. To, no, there was no Mayapur. We're talking uh, no for the four. We did Boston. not buy any land in Mayapur until 1969 or 70. Yeah. So did, 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 did my, I think, uh, did the Prabhupada want to build the uh, Mayapur uh, temple, Mayapur uh, big, uh, temple of Vedic Plantarium? He, he never discussed it once. Oh, yeah? Temple of Vedic Plantarium. Well, he did discuss it a little bit. He, he went to uh, see Sridhar in Mayapur with a Chudananda. And he was talking with Sridhar, I believe, about opening a center in Mayapur. That was in probably, I think, 67 or 68. He went there, and, he, well, when, and when he went back to India with Chudananda, that's what it happened. And then uh, he talked to Sridhar with apparently an incredibly unsatisfactory conversation. And Prabhupada was very glum when he left Mayapur. And uh, Chudananda seeing Prabhupada looking very glum or bitter, looking not happy. Glum means not satisfied, not happy, depressed. And when Chudananda saw Prabhupada not looking happy, he said to Srila Prabhupada on the train, Well, Srila Prabhupada, we're leaving Mayapur. And Prabhupada replied, said, Yes, Mayapur. <laughs> that was his hmm. discussion. That was his discussion with Sridhar, Maya, hmm. or so. Later on, he did get some land somehow. I don't even know how he did it. And Chudananda built a Kacha Bengali house on it, which means Kacha means woven bamboo split, yeah. split bamboo woven walls. Uh, it had a plinth, about a two or three foot plinth off the ground because it floods all the time in Mayapur, usually more, 10 feet, but, and it did flood. It, 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 people were going into that hut in boats, floating under the rafters in the boat, in that temple, mm. in, in that house. But anyhow, it had bamboo walls and a thatched roof and, and bamboo structure. You know, you have to make a bamboo frame, put up the chitai, called chitai walls, we know Chittai. And then, uh, and then, uh, so that was the only hit place. And that's, to this day, it's called the Chutananda Cottage. And when I came in 1971 to 
72? 71. What was the first Mayan professor from? 71. I came in 71 with a Chudanandas Brahmachari, and we set everything up for the festival. Very excellent, very elegant. Chudananda did a great job, and I worked closely with him because he knew all the sources, he knew all the tumbles, he knew how to get everything. And then, during the festival, Srila Prabhupada had me set the cornerstone to the temple. In down, 16 feet down pit, we went down, and he set the cornerstone. He asked for me and said he wanted me to set the cornerstone because he wanted me to build the temple. And I assured you, if I had built it, it wouldn't be the ugly building they have right now. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely not. It would have but been no, just, I'm it talking about the. It would have honored Bengal instead of trying to look like the Catholic Church. You have the original one? Original one. Prabhupada, Prabhupada designed it well at Ron Shore, we're now known as Ron Shore Prime, myself and Srila Prabhupada. Does that work together for two weeks, day and night, designing that temple? It wasn't as though Prabhupada was... just was presented with something. He gave us all the ideas how to make it, how to design it. He even made sketches. That's very important. I would like to see these yes. pictures, designs. Well, I have mm -hmm. the original. I mean, it's original. Tra traditional temple, maybe. Traditional architecture. Yeah, you know, I was just at my storage unit, and I would have brought to have brought them back, but I, didn't, I, I couldn't find so many of my things there in the storage unit. It's very packed tight and very hard to find things. Yeah. Hare Krishna. But in time, it'll all come out. Hmm. In the right. This, go, go ahead. So I was talking about help? this. One. Banu, Banu. Yes. So Speak, yeah. Banu. First of, the building temple of Vedic Mahantaryam since decades, it's still under construction. They're saying that uh, it was Prabhupada's mission to build, to get a temple of this building, which shows all the universes not in that, it. Not that design. Hmm. He never approved Maybe. that design. That was created by Bhavananda um. and um, his people. Mm -hmm. The It's more simple than that. It's more simple. They're all Catholics, but so they want to collect. It's more simple. So they want to collect money. Uh, Do you know with that project? Simple. The one that Prabhupada and I and John Short designed was Bengali style. Bengali style. Yes. Mm -hmm. It looked as though it was emerged out of the culture of Bengal, not the that's, culture that's, that's, of the Catholic that's... Church. And it wasn't <laughs> called what they call it now, Chandra Vaya Mandir. It was called ISKCON World Headquarters. Yeah. The dome looks like Washington, D.C. It does? Mm -hmm. That's what I suggested, yeah. yeah. Exactly, <laughs> like the Washington, D.C. Exactly. Congress, you don't think Congress. it looks like the you don't think it looks like the uh, Saint Paul's Cathedral in the Vatican? Yeah, also, also. Oh, also that exactly like that too. Of course, the architect classical architecture, Greco-Roman architecture, mainly Roman architecture that we use for the Capitol building, comes from Italy. Mm -hmm. And the originators of the Constitution and the government and the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were all Freemasons. They were Masons, belonged to the uh -huh. Masonic order. That's why they said things like, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. They were saying that in the face of the King George the Fourth of England who was ruling by under the, um, what's his name, the um, King James Bible, 
the divine right of kings. So according to the British monarchy, the, the kingdom is divine right. And if they come to America, they should either have another king or that King George should be the king, which is what he was until the revolution. But the revolution was conducted by Freemasons and they uh, declared a new concept of government based on Mason Masonic laws. Mm -hmm. So all everything about the United States Constitution, Declaration of Independence comes from the Masonic laws. And you know the Washington yeah. Monument? You know the Washington Monument? Yes. yes. It's tall and it tapers up and has a point, at, so it comes to sort of a point at the top. Do you, do you know what that is called properly? The style of building that is? No, what is it? An obelisk. <laughs> an obelisk. It's an Egyptian, yeah. it's an Egyptian building ornament. form. Yeah, I ornament, see. yeah. But the obelisk can be very large, and this one is. And it's mm -hmm. also designed for a um, Masonic ritual. It is part of a Masonic mm -hmm. ritual. And I think you will find that there's been things written about the location of these different buildings according to Masonic law, where everything is located. And in the basis mm -hmm. of base, underneath the Capitol building, underneath the Congress building and stuff like that, there are labyrinths underneath that are completely uh -huh in tune with the Masonic laws also. With child sacrifice and everything. <laughs> yeah. No sacrifice, the Masons didn't do things like that. But anyhow, so what have you got here, Ronald? Prabhu, uh, this is from a conversation with the GBC, May 27, 1975 in Mayapur. So Srila Prabhupada is commenting on how the funding should be used in mm -hmm. 1975, March 27th in Mayapur. Srila Prabhupada, so 50% goes to the Hamsaduda book fund. That is stated in the BBT. That is the main purpose that 50% must go Hamsaduda for printing, 50% for printing, 50% for building. That's all right. This is the main purpose. Yeah. Can and everyone see it? Yes, I've read this. So okay. part of the building is a Mayapur project. Because uh, I, I, that's what I read. So what then... Did read? What did you read? I should have known it. About... Uh, 50% go to the Mayapu project. That's what I read up sometimes. What, the Prabhupada said that? Oh, that's what I read. I think it's, it's, uh, it's known. You read it, but who, who said it or wrote it? Who wrote it? Uh, the, the GBC, probably. So now we're going to shift gears now. The GBC oh, yes. are criminals. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, they continue asking for funds for this project. Uh, and, uh, and hey, Krishna Ram, Ramachandra. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, I was wondering, um, are these files you have here, these are downloaded? No, this is a compendium of Srila Prabhupada's lectures, conversations, Letters, essays, books, legal documents. It's that like right? an encyclopedia of research. If you want to go and see what Prabhupada said about something, you know, in uh, in uh, the in his uh, you know Vani form, uh, writing. What's form. the website? What's the website uh, what, for? What, the website. What year? Is, is that a website? No. Huh? This is an huh? offline program. That okay, that's, I was um, kind of wondering about the nature of it. How can oh. one acquire? Oh, I'll send you the details, Prabhu. Just remind me, send me a message, and I'll send okay. it to you. Yeah, send it to me also. Okay, okay. What, 
What year this conversation took place? March 27th, 1975, Mayapur, the GBC meeting, conversation with the GBC. Uh -huh. yeah. And of course, uh, all these instructions are not being followed. There's no auditing of, of anything of BBT. Nothing is uh, done. Well, remember the GBC by that time legally ceased to exist. Prabhupada let them go on because he didn't want to destroy the movement. Yeah. This is... should not be confused with approval. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's a very good point. Because, you know, yeah. if someone falls down or, 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 you know, goes away, that is not the standard, you know. They go away, they don't listen, they don't follow. That is their problem, but yeah. the message and the instruction is the same to everyone. And here, uh, go ahead. Who's, who's, I, I had a question. I had a question about the BBT, uh, okay. which, which which became BBTI, another corporation of ah. uh, West Bengal. So. This is completely different from the original instructions. And that's why the society uh, is going berserk, you know, it's, it's not the same thing. Yeah. Well, it's one of the reasons it's going berserk. But the BBT was created. Right as here. Separate, as separate, legally yeah. separate from ISKCON. That, that is what Prabhupada is saying here. You, you see this highlighter part that I've highlighted? Shri so Prabhupada yeah. is saying here, uh, if ISKCON is compromised, Shri so Prabhupada wanted the BBT to be protected, meaning that his, it's a legal matter, that legal matter, so I want to protect the BBT. You see it here? Yeah. Can well, everyone see it? Yes, yes. Here. Now that, now one thing is that sometime before Jay Tirta suggested that if ISKCON goes into liquidation, Prabhupada is talking about ISKCON going into liquid, liquidation, then the BBT also will be affected. No. The BBT, if separate, will not be affected. Yes, so Acharya Rishi is saying this is only a legal matter. Srila Prabhupada, legal matter, so I want to protect BBT. See? Yeah, yes. but that's not that's not his real reasoning, really. He's saying that to them to placate them. Yes, but his his real reason was that he didn't want them to use the books for power, selling the books for power, the very thing we were discussing earlier. Right. And he didn't want them to change the books. He yeah. He didn't want them to have the power to change the books. Right. Right. Yeah. So. In, uh, in America now, if someone is distributing a million dollars worth of books, they can actually stipulate corrections to the books. And if they don't do the corrections, then they'll be like, I will not buy the books anymore from you people. And there goes a million dollars, you know? So just see how they're changing the books. If I'm buying question. a million dollars worth of books, and I say, I want to change this, and the BBTI does not agree, then I just pull out, you know, and then there goes the income. Are you talking about book changes? No, I'm talking about how these people are manipulating the whole thing. Well, what do, what do you mean? I mean, if someone, like, for example, Silicon Valley, they're distributing millions and millions of edited books, you know, uh -huh. and... And Vaisheshika is a big supporter of the edited books. Yeah, all over the world. All over the world. Yeah. But that oh, is yeah. because back at the very beginning, that's why the GBC, the main reason the GBC refused to be elected. Right. To follow Prabhupada's clear direction and their own signatures. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm. if the original 12 GBC signs that they're going to be elected every 12, every three years, 
uh, how can they then later on say that they're not? They've made their vow in front of Prabhupada. So the thing is, the thing that got them was during the, when in the direction of management literature, Prabhupada said that he has mentioned that he is also creating a book trust. But they didn't know what that book trust was at the time they signed the document of the direction of management, which was to create the GBC as temple presidents taking a leave of absence for three years and coming back to be temple president once again. So what happened there is they saw the BBT trustees were not elected. They have a lifetime appointment. Now that lifetime appointment is an astonishing thing. And then they saw that of their number, certain people without their without the political clout that the other GBC guys had, that without that political clout, they were getting to be lifetime appointed trustees, whereas GBC is elected only. So they said, this is wrong. We don't want it. We don't accept this. Why should they be lifetime and we are temporary? Okay. And Prabhupada wanted that. So that in this conversation, when he's talking about protecting the BBT, he's definitely telling the truth, but he's not revealing what he means by telling the truth. Because ultimately, their purpose was to change the books and control. The, they wanted to control the BBT. The GBC wanted to control the BBT not have to do business with them less like a beggar coming to the king. They simply Complete didn't want control. to do that. So this is the facsimile of the direction of management. If anyone wants a copy on Facebook, on YouTube, I have it here. You can see it here. Yeah. Great. Yeah. It's, it has been hidden for 30 years or something. It was not known. Yeah, see it? It's a facsimile. The signatures are here. Can it, yeah. Can everyone see it? Yeah, it's a very important document. See? For the management of ISKCON temples as independent. Yeah. Rupa Nuga, William Ehrlichman is Bhagavan. Yeah, right here. Arundar. So they know, big shots are here. They know the, the, the rules, the original instructions. Right here. Here, here are the names. See it? Yes. More, than, more than instructions. It's a contract. Yes. It's a con yes. It's a contract, yes. It has been changed completely. Right. Important to know. If this was being uh, practiced, this con should be perfect. Yeah. So, so what, do you, what do you call this? This is a direction. This is a direction of management. How Shri Prabhupada wanted his institution to continue, specifically the duties of the GBC and how they were supposed to be elected every three years. Uh, four new people would have been elected by the temple presidents and the temple presidents can become the GBC or the temple presidents would become the GBC. They would serve for a period of three years and then yes. go back to the temples and then, you know, manage much better by having more experience, more insight, more spiritual insights on how to do things. So in this way, the movement would have continued how the temple centers would be always independent, but this would be called the big ISKCON, meaning that how Srila Prabhupada had set up. Yeah. Of course, together with the officiating priest to, to initiate. Right, right. But what they changed, that they, they became uh, Prabhupada themselves, 11 Prabhupads. 
11, his divine grace, and rule over all over the world into zones, all these speculations. So, Chiranandha uh, Prabhu, you wanted to talk about the direction of management. I have it here. Do you have any specific questions for Narayan Prabhu? Because Narayan Prabhu has been discussing this for what? For 30 years, right, Narayan Prabhu? Or something like that. Yeah, but still, still it has to be discussed because we have new audience. Of course, of and course. That's why, that's why I'm asking Zoom, you. Your Zoom program is new. We got oh. different uh, auditors. Right, right. So, yeah. anyone have any questions? Anyone who's watching on YouTube, on Facebook, if they want to understand about how Shila Prabhupada wanted ISKCON managed, this is called the direction of management. And this was uh, written up in 19, when was this? No, 1970, very early in the movement, just uh, four years after the movement. 66. I would suggest, I would suggest it, can it be read now? It's not, it's not very long yet. Sure. Uh, Chirananda Prabhu, you want to read it or should I read it? Read it, read it yourself. My eyes are not so good. Okay. I undersigned A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, disciple of Om Vishnupad Paramahamsa 108, Shri Bhakti Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada, came in the United States in 1965 on September 18th for the purpose of starting Krishna Consciousness Movement. For one year, I had no shelter. I was traveling in many parts of this country. Then in 1966, July, I incorporated the society under the name and style, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Briefly, ISKCON, the lawyer, Mr. J. Goldsmith, gradually, gradually the society increased and one after another branches were opened. Now we have got 34 branches enlisted herewith. So these are the 34 branches, Amsterdam, Atlanta, Baltimore, Berkeley, Berlin, Boston, Boulder, Buffalo, Chicago, Columbus, Michigan, Ed, Edburn, Hamsburg, Honolulu, Laguna Beach, London, Los Angeles, Montreal, New Vrindavan, New York City, Paris, Philadelphia, Provincetown, Massachusetts, San Diego, San Francisco, San Jose, Santa Barbara, Seattle, St. Louis, Sydney, Tokyo, Toronto, Vancouver, Washington. Fantastic. So these are all the centers and temples. So now line 22, I'm reading line 22. As we have increased our volume of activities, now I think a governing body commission hereafter referred to as the GBC, should be established. I am getting old, 75 years old. Therefore, at any time, I may be out of the scene. Therefore, I think it is necessary to give instruction to my disciples how they, sh how they shall manage the whole institution. They are already managing individual centers represented by one president, one secretary and one treasurer. And in my opinion, they are doing nice. But we want still more improvement in the standard of temple management. So this is the theme, you know, but we still want more improvement in the standard of temple management, propaganda for Krishna consciousness, distribution of books and literature, opening of new centers and educating devotees to the right standard. This is very important. The statement here. Huh? What do you think, Chirananda Prabhu? Yeah, everything is important in this letter. Yeah, but we still want more improvement in the standard of temple management, propaganda for Krishna consciousness, distribution of books and literatures, opening of new centers, and educating devotees to the right standard. Therefore, I have decided to adopt the following principles, and I hope my beloved disciples will kindly accept them. So now I'm reading page four. There was a meeting in San Francisco during the Rati Yatra Festival 1970, and many presidents of the centers were present. 
In that meeting, it was resolved that an ad hoc committee be set up to form the constitution, which is taken into consideration. My duty was to first appoint 12 persons to my free choice amongst my disciples, and I do it now, and the names are as follows. So I'm reading number 11 now. Sriman Rupanuga Das Adhikari, Sriman Bhagavan Das Adhikari, Sriman Shamashunda Das Adhikari, Sriman Satsarup Das Adhikari, Sriman Karandara Das Adhikari, Sriman Hansiduda Das Adhikari, Sriman Tamal Krishna Das Adhikari, Sriman Sudama Das Adhikari, Sri Bali Mardan Das Brahmachari, Sriman Jagdish Das Adhikari, Sriman Hai Griva Das Adhikari, Sriman Krishna Dash Adhikari. So now I'm on line 23. These personalities are now considered as my direct representatives. While I am living, they will act as my zonal secretaries, and after my demise, they will be known as executors. I have already awarded sannyas or the renounced order of life to some of my students and they have also got very important duties to perform in this connection. The sannyasis will travel to our different centers for preaching purpose, as well as enlightening the members of the center for spiritual advancement. The sannyasis will suggest for opening new centers in suitable places, and the GBC will take action on it. So now on, on page uh, four, Line number one, as was stipulated by the ad hoc committee, the function of the GBC will be as follows with particulars. Particulars of the governing body commission. The purpose of the governing body commission is to act as the instrument for the execution of the will of his divine grace. And further, number seven, the GBC oversees all operations and management of ISKCON as it receives direction from Srila Prabhupada and his divine grace has the final approval in all matters. Number 10, his divine grace will select the initial 12 members of the GBC. In the succeeding years, the GBC will be elected by a vote of all temple presidents who will vote for eight, uh, will vote for eight from a ballot of all temple presidents, which may also include any secretary who is in charge of a temple. Those eight with the greatest number of votes will be members for the next term of the GBC. Srila Prabhupada, will, Srila Prabhupada will also choose to retain four commissioners. In the event of Srila Prabhupada's absence, the retiring members will decide which four will remain. The commissioners will serve for a period of three years and they, be, they may be re-elected at the end of this period. The chairman is elected by the GBC for each meeting. He has no veto power, but in the event of a vote tie, his vote will decide. The same will apply for votes cast by mail between regular meetings. Okay. Where was I? Sir? Okay, now I'm reading uh, 25 here. Throughout the year, each of the commissioners will stay with his divine grace for one month at a time and keep the other commissioners informed of his divine grace's instructions. The primary objective of the GBC is to organize the opening of new temples and to maintain the established temples. Advice will be given by the GBC in case in cases of real property purchases, which shall be in the name of ISKCON, trucks or other vehicles will be purchased in the name of the local, local temple president. Mm -hmm. So far my books are concerned, I'm setting up a different body of management known as the Bhakti Vedanta Book Trust. The trustees of this body are also members of the GBC but their function is not dependent on the GBC. So 
Hansadura and other members like Bali Mardan, even though they were GBC members, they were independent of this uh, in in the Bhakti Vedanta Book Trust management. They were totally separate, so they had the ultimate authority. The GBC did not have the ultimate authority. These uh, twelve people. Huh? Uh, Srila Prabhupada says, so far my books are concerned, I'm setting up a different body of management known as the Bhakti Vedanta Book Trust. The trustees of this body are also members of the GBC, but their function is not dependent on the GBC. This Press was created for the exclusive publication of my books and literatures and should be continued in that way. During my absence, no one shall live in my apartment. Hmm. So that's that. In 1970, July 28th. Great. So this is very clear, very simple. And uh, one of the <laughs> primary documents that the GBC is continuing to neglect. Prabhu is, is okay. It's good. Yeah, it's a very important document. So, um, no, no, Prabhu, you're muted. You can unmute yourself. Okay, this is the constitution of this card. Yes. It's like the Constitution of the United States. Can you imagine yeah. if they created the United States Constitution and then refused to obey it officially and then created a whole other form of government that had nothing to do with the Constitution? And yet they kept the same statement about themselves, congressman, senator, whatever, Supreme Court, all that stuff, they can create. I'm copying the American style in my talking because the American style was from a Masonic origin, as we mentioned earlier, and has nothing to do with a revision of monarchy such as took place with the Magna Carta in England and other type of reforms that took place that caused a democratization of um, a democratization of these monarchies. There, there was a, um, it was a lot of rebellion. And of course the French Revolution was a complete rebellion. They destroyed everything. Mm -hmm. As you probably know from living in Strands, Liberté, Egalité, Fraternité. So in, the, in France, the fourth estate, namely the Shudras, rebelled against the first estate, which was the monarchy, the second estate, which was the clergy, and the third estate was the, uh, was that the, um, the press or the um, local management? I forget. You probably know better than I do, right? Having lived there. What was the fourth? What were the three estates? Uh, Chidananda, can you hear me? I don't know the details, Prabhu. Oh, oh, well. But I okay. know that the people, the people got power by destroying the monarchy. Yeah, well, that was the fourth estate. I think maybe the third estate was the press, but in any event, you know the newspapers. But in any event they were having a shuffle shuffle around in France at the time of modifying the monarchy to be more like what America was trying to accomplish. And while they were shuffling around, uh, what is it, Robespierre uh, mobilized the fourth estate and made an overthrow of the monarchy and chopped everybody's heads off. In the end, of course, his head got chopped off too. In the guillotine. So, so, so anyhow, that was France. Then we see what happened with America rebelling from England, creating a democracy, a republic, not a democracy, but a republic. And um, Benjamin, what's it? Um, not Benjamin Franklin. Uh, 
Oh, one of the top, top guys. I don't think it was Benjamin Franklin. Uh, stepped out of the meeting where they were had just ratified the Constitution by vote amongst themselves, mainly meaning the colonies, the 13 colonies voted to agree to create a United States, the state being the individual colonies and United meaning that they agreed to have one common government, which was difficult to achieve in this country in America because they all cherished their independence. So they kept a lot of individual rights. We think of a state as being a, um, you know, part of the United States, but the, sta the state is actually independent. It was an independent country, mm -hmm. really, before it joined the United States. So each state then bargained away and got different rights that differed from the federal rights. And that's what went on in this last last election was states, it was really based, although people didn't say it properly, they mentioned, alluded, but if they come right out and said, this is a confusion between states' rights and uh, federal rights. So anyhow, Jackson, not Jackson, um, Jefferson, Jefferson was in that meeting and he stepped out and a woman that knew him in the crowd cried out, Mr. Jefferson, what sort of government have you given us? And Thomas Jefferson stood there grandly, looked at the lady and the crowd and said, a republic, man, ma'am, a republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. So that was what Prabhupada did. He created a republic, Prabhus, if you can keep it. But they destroyed it immediately. They never followed it. And every time was a year for an election, that would have been 73, probably 73 or 74, depending on when you started counting, was created in 70. So would it be 74 when the three year term had gone? Every time there was a time for an election, they created such a disturbance and scandal in the GBC that having an election was out of the question. Huh, they were very smart, huh? <laughs> well, yeah. Crooked. It's, like what, it's very similar to what's going on in the United States right now. Right, right. You're faking, huh. the, faking the votes and all that stuff. Crazy. Well, not Controlling. crazy. It's, 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 uh, if, you, if that's what you want, that's how you get it. You convince the devotees it's all business as usual. Everything is fine. You don't have to worry about anything. All the Prabhus. Uh, you know, Prabhupada created his God. This is it. Now we're GBC. Well, they made GBC sound as though they were extra special. They didn't mention that Prabhupada was, wanted them to hold elections every three years. Not once. Even uh, uh, Hari Vallas in... When I saw him in uh, in um, in Seattle in 2007, He's a guru now. he had not, he had not read the direction of management. I think until 1969. I had a conversation with Harry Velas. I think I told you about his. He's pretty successful at what he does, being a guru. What? I said I had a conversation with Harry Velas not yeah, too long ago. That. I said, he's pretty successful in the guru business and uh, he has been somewhat successful in his business. And I guess he owns a couple of the temples and a couple of cows and land and disciples who are, you know, they're pushing the ISKCON agenda. Yeah, well, put it this way. He is a businessman and he fought for years to be outside of uh, ISKCON. What do you mean fought for years? Can you elaborate? Well, he was a temple president, but he was very much against the guru system. Uh -huh. But it's good business to be in the guru system. Now he's and a guru. He's, he's a business. No, he's not a guru. He's a businessman. No, now he's a guru and a businessman. 
He yeah, is a good guru to, to guarantee remaining a businessman. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it, it's like that in the Catholic Church, you know. Somebody go, goes up in the church and he's a big, big businessman or something, and then they offer him to be a bishop or a cardinal. Well, he doesn't want to be a bishop or a cardinal. But he has no choice. It's either that or get kicked out or be killed. So he'd rather be a cardinal or a bishop than be killed or thrown in jail or boiled in oil. So that's what Harry Velas. Now, uh, Chitananda may know something about Ch Harry Velas because in 1970 and onward, which is when he and I, well, you know, 69 and 70, he and I bonded quite strongly in England. He had broken with the Paris Temple and he had his own organization set up, which had nothing to do with, with the Paris ISKCON. So does Chidananda know anything about that? Chidananda Prabhu, unmute yourself and speak. And let the I damn dog speak. I, <laughs> I don't know the details, but I know he had spiritual sky making incense business and apparently successful. But he was not into management. He had his own business. He had going more nicely. than his own business. He had his own movement. No, Very no, small. No. Yeah, he mm. did. I think. That's what he has in Seattle or Washington now, his own movement, but using being an ISKCON guru and using the name ISKCON. That's, well, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He never, he never got along, and they didn't want him to do business anyhow. They wanted him to do business as ISKCON, not yeah. as far as well us. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's an extremely nice person. And he's very independent, and he's a bit of a hippie, sort of. I mean, he doesn't break the regular principles, as far as I know, but his wife hates his guts. I said, whose wife doesn't? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's why it's for you. But <laughs> if you ask his wife anything about him, she'll start foaming at the mouth and ranting. But I think it's more because... She wanted things and he didn't let her have them. Yeah, that's what wives want. <laughs> Money and power. Right. So after so, reading know, this document, uh, Prabhu? I wouldn't. After I would reading this count. document. Go ahead, Nanai Prabhu. What? You were say I would not count? Oh, oh. I would not count him out of the picture. Oh, how are you doing? <clears throat> okay. Because he was very interested in the direction of management. Of but course, I, wouldn't be. I mean, for, well, for, his, for his movement well, to be successful, you. for Harry Velas's movement to be successful as ISKCON, he should, and he should use this direction well, of management. Yeah, well, that's how he saw it. But if you go to Badri Narayan, Badri Narayan is an enemy of the direction of management. Oh, Enemy? All the ISKCON gurus are enemies of the direction of management. Oh, a conspiration. Oh, isn't it obvious? There are people that they say, we believe in the direction of management. And then somebody says, well, what was the last time you were elected to be a GBC by the temple presidents? Oh, Prabhupada changed his mind. They can say that because they were in a position to tell is anything that came from Prabhupada that wasn't in writing, and a lot of things like the direction of management that were in writing, anything that Prabhupada said was presented by temple presidents and people like that. When the GBC came along, it was ideal for them because they then became like cardinals. They directed all the bishops, which were like temple presidents. They told them what to do. Huh. And, so, told them what, and told them what Prabhupada wanted 
except that they made it up. So in California, where we are now, the big dude or the big guru or the big GVC is Buddy Narayan, or one of them. Yes. He's turning into a woman, though. Yeah, he looks like a woman. <laughs> you should see. I don't know. If you're a lusty male, I recommend check out his breasts. <laughs> yeah, he's... <laughs> uh, I don't know why he took sannyas, just to, uh, I mean, just... Sannyas is power. I don't know. It could be. I don't know. He had plenty of power before. It was, I'm sure it was political. Of course. Words, he had, he, just like Hari Vilas had to become a guru, he had to take sannyas in order <coughs> to keep his grip on things. Because what he did, actually, he was in charge of raising a huge, I think like, $5 million or something of that sort to build a new temple there. <coughs> Who was? Under his, under his leadership. Who? Audrey. Oh, Audrey, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, under his leadership, something terrible went wrong and either the money was withdrawn or the money was misspent or somebody embezzled the money. I don't remember what happened. Gotcha. Gotcha. Huh. Chiranda Prabhu, you wanted to say yeah, something? Go ahead. No, no, Prabhu. Yeah. Is, uh... Of course, this document uh, proves that uh, if we study the history of ISKCON, that what, what there is, why this movement has gone completely off the track. Right, right. And, they, and um, the newcomers, of course, they don't know about these things. Yeah. And they took the take is gone as it is now as the, the proper is gone. Yeah, that is why we're making these videos. We're going back to the original documents and then saying, okay, this is where it went wrong. And if you continue like this, it's going to continue to be, uh, you know, misdirected, mismanaged. Everything would become a mess. Actually, there was a, a court case to to denounce all this uh, takeover from Laguna Beach, I think. Oh, oh, huh, huh. To, to take back ISKCON to its original position. You know about it? You are muted. Oh. I think Naran Prabhu might know more about it. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure. About that, something uh, like, a, case. like a, bill, a billion dollar damages, you know? Right, right. Narayan uh, Prabhu is coming back on, so. Narayan Prabhu. Hi. But, I what? dropped my phone and he disconnected to turn my phone off. Okay, so uh, Chiranandar Prabhu was asking a question. Chiranandar Prabhu, please go ahead. Uh, Prabhu Narayan, uh, do you know about the court case? suing the, the GBC for going off track and also for the BBT takeover. There's something like a $1 billion court case. What, where, what, where was that taking place? Something like Laguna Beach, I think. Well, where did the because court was, case, where was the court case filed? I think it's La, Laguna Beach. I can uh, check this again. But then was it, I don't. What's it in Long uh, Island? Long Island, I think. Yeah, because the GBC part, was. I was a key part of that court case. Oh, the Long I, Island case. I was a key part of the court case. The Long so Island case. Don't... Yeah. Huh. It's so, very interesting. Can you please uh, talk about it? Can you give some details regarding that? Well, it's a lot of details. I mean, the it's synopsis so. or, you know, the 10 liners where, why they were, why ISKCON intervened and tried to stop the sale and what was the political and philosophical or whatever reasons for? Well, my memory is a little uh, hazy on a lot of the underlying factors, but there was a temple there that was in deep trouble. Okay. The devotee 
took it over and it's somewhere down the line, uh, they decided that it should be a Prabhupada temple, not, not Iskand. It was Iskand, but it would be Prabhupada, Iskand Prabhupada temple. Hmm. The GBC came in and said, we are the GBC. We want to kick you guys out and put our own people in there. And they said, you can't do that because of the direction of management. So they fought for years. And it, who knows, they may still be fighting. Uh, and I was involved with it to the degree that the, the GBC sent out three, two attorneys with a third attorney on, um, on the phone and a videographer and a court reporter, you know, that just tap, taps away at the secret keys, you know, in a courtroom to record the conversation, which she did a terrible job of because she didn't know anything about <laughs> what we were saying because it was all Sanskrit terms and stuff like that. So she got them all wrong. But in any event, I was there. What year was this? What year was this? Oh my God, 2000 something. Oh, okay. Uh, Nehemiah Nittai was president. Nehemiah Nittai. 2010, maybe? Okay. Or maybe 2012. Okay. Not that late. Anyhow, the president was Nehemiah Nittai. They, they did a deposition. Do you know how, do you want to know how long I was being deposed in one day? What, 10 hours? 17. 17 hours? Yes. Oh my Krishna. With one Meetings. lunch break. Wow. Oh my God. So why did they hide you? Why were they questioning you? They were trying to defeat me on the subject of the direction of management. Oh. <laughs> I, defe I, def I defeated them on the subject of the direction uh, of management. It should have been recorded. <laughs> Well, they could record it, but that doesn't mean they're going to use it. Uh, they recorded it and they didn't use it. But I have the recording. I have a copy of the recording and I have the printout. Uh, Actually, quite a number of copies. I had it duplicated uh, in about 20 copies. Oh, we and need that document. We want oh. the document. That yeah, is. I'll get, I'll get it to you. Please. I want the recording also. Is there audio recording? I believe so. But the problem is that I have to find it. Everything's in my. Story. No, you have to find it and give it to us. This is well, easier okay. said than done. I'll come find it for you. Yeah, so <laughs> the thing is, and find it. I I just went down was, to find a few things, and I didn't find most of them, and um, and I also was taking stuff out and brought it to my apartment, your apartment, to you know go over. So. Uh, file, so, your voice is too loud. It's too so, loud. And yeah. okay. I was there from like, oh, I think about one or two in the afternoon until 9.30 at night, moving 40-pound boxes of documents. And I had to move sculptures to weigh hundreds of pounds by hand to get uh, to the uh, documents. Okay. So it wasn't all that uh. easy. So, anyways, that document is very important. If we can get an audio or transcript, uh, whenever you can. Yeah, but the Ramachandra? document is yes. good also, except, of course, the wo woman got so much stuff wrong, it's hardly comprehensible. No, but if the audio, your audio is there, we can figure it out. Yeah, if I can find it, huh. it'll, it will take a long time Ramachandra? to get to it. Yes. Aribol? Yes. Aribol? Yes. yes, go ahead. So the main thing is about the court case. Can you briefly say what it was? They were suing the, the ISKCON? ISKCON for no, $1 no, no, no. billion? Dollars ISKCON or was suing them. No, not ISKCON. Well, actually, the, BB, the, G, the GBC was suing uh, Long Island ISKCON Temple. Mm -hmm. uh, but then after... The, the, the devotee, Long Island sued them back. The devotee in charge was named Nimai Pandit. Yeah. And he but they sued them handling after. the whole thing. What? Do you know about the the court case suing the GBC after that? 
What year? One billion dollar. What, what year? I don't know the year, but I know it exists. Do you remember, well, Prabhu? Maybe, for the takeover the of it. Yes, Prabhu? Maybe that they did so and, and that the BVT. It seems uh, like, it seems it like Shiranandha Prabhu has a good relationship with Nimai Pandit. Do you, uh, do you talk to him? Why don't you ask him? Yes. Oh, no, no. I just, I know that he has his own temple now in uh, Guyana. He, he, I think he abandoned this temple. Nimai Pandit? Where he, he was being, uh, yes, I think. He has got his own temple in Ghana. So that's fine. So then we can contact him and talk to him. He abandoned yeah. ISKCON. Yeah, yeah. Can... Yeah. You can even have him come on the thing Zoom. Is... He could yeah, talk he to can... all of us on yeah. the Zoom. And yes. uh, the thing is, I mean, okay. there was an attempt to to get off this all this uh, corruption of the movement with a legal case. You know, that would have finished them. The corruption existed wall to wall before 1970. Huh, interesting. Mm. That's why Prabhupada a... created the direction of management. Okay. Was to correct, yeah. to correct the corruption. He knew that they would not obey it. Mm. Huh. He yeah. put that up there to give them something to disobey rather than okay. letting them uh, do what uh, they please as though he had ordered it. In other words, he didn't yeah. do this for them. He didn't do this for every, everybody, and for anything during his, uh, before he entered Samadhi. He did that for the, he did that he created the direction of management specifically to empower the 10,000 year association. Try. <laughs> namely us. Mm -hmm. Why? Because nobody else could give a, give a damn. You're right. Mm. Nobody else could give a damn. And you have Ritviks like Pranjan and Yasoda, they're against the direction of management. Are they? No mm. question. Because they want to create their own pseudo is come. I see. Under their own authorship. Any question? Yes, Banu. Banu? Prabhu, go ahead. So, if you are going to create the, the real ISKCON, real Prabhupada ISKCON, how are we going to deal with the now ISKCON? I mean, they would be retaliating. We don't, we don't, they would we don't, be, need, they, we don't need to. They would they would be enemies with us with uh, they would if we grow if we grow when you say they some... tell me who are they who is the they you're talking about the GBC and Man. all the gurus okay GBC how many GBC are there God knows G B only one GBC. How many? Well, how many GBC not, not members are there? Sure. Members. It's certainly not 12. It must be more like 30, 40, something like that. Mm. I don't yeah. know how many GBCs there are. We, we can know that. And going how, many guru, how many gurus are there? The only people that stand to lose anything are the gurus and the GBC, mm. both of whom can be clearly proven to be illegal. Right. right. So, I'm not worried about a hundred people. I'm concerned about, I don't know how many ISCA members there are, hundreds of thousands, I would imagine, right? Yeah, yeah. hundreds of thousands. And I'm not concerned about them. Do you know why? I want them to be concerned about themselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best that way to put it. <laughs> yeah. They've been screwed, and they don't. And they don't know it. They think that they're screwed, and they think it's pleasurable. How horrible! You're talking about the disciples in the moment. Yes. Yeah, yes. The disciples have been screwed by their gurus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For, for many, many, for many, years. many years. From the beginning. <laughs> from, okay. from 1978. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's why. That's <laughs> why. Ten thousand a year. Is very needed. Very needed. What, what? What do we care for a bunch of puppet heads? Right. No. The same way they filed a case in uh, Laguna Beach. They're saying we talked about it right now. Yeah. They. They may sound. You see, a king is only a king until his subjects rebel against him. Understand? Right. <laughs> Look what happened in Russia. The Romanovs, who were basically decent people, the peasants got worked up with the idea of overthrowing, overthrowing the monarchy, the czar. The czar. Mm. So they mm. stormed the Winter Palace. They took the czar prisoner, took him off, and hid him and his family, who were a very decent bunch, and but a little out of tune with the people, shall we say. And then finally, they shot them to death in the basement of a palace out in Siberia. And they, the, the last act of the Romanovs, the, who, who were the royalty of the Russian mm. court, of the Ru Russian king, king, kingdom, uh, do you know what they did? They started shooting at them, and they didn't die. It scared the heck out of the peasants that were holding the guns. <laughs> they start shooting, thinking he's going to fall over dead, and they didn't. They just stood there. Do you know why? Does anyone know why they didn't die? No idea. Why? They were planning their escape, so they had completely, under their clothes, put jewels and gold and stuff like that in a thick layer all the way around their bodies under their clothes, because that's how they were going to escape and get to the checkpoints to get to some other country. Mm. So the bullets hit the metal, the gold, and, and diamonds and rubies and whatnot, and not their flesh. When they finally figured that out, they shot them in the head. Yeah. But anyhow, that's yeah. It. But I'm saying... That's what happened in history. The French Revolution is another liberté means liberty, égalité means equality, e fraternité means brotherhood. Those three words caused the working class to rebel against the monarchy. Mm -hmm. Under Robespierre. So I think it's pretty clear. So what I'm saying is, what would make us different except a super superstitious fear of the GBC and the gurus as being more powerful than we are? Most of them would be gone. Most of them the would next, be gone in the next 15, 20 15, years. 20 years anyway. anyway. The 10, 10, 10, 10, years in the next 15 or 20 over. years. So I'm talking about what we can do right now. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> they will be gone, but it, it's important that we do this now, not wait 20 years, for the right, simple right. reason that, first of all, nobody will be around that knows what's going on anyhow. And second of all, the, the other reason is the people that take over after them will be a million times worse than they are. Yeah, that's a good point. We have a window, a narrow, small window of opportunity to create the 10,000 year association. Jai. So Banu Prabhu, was the question answered? I think it was... Because I don't know if it will take you or somebody else in our group 10,000 years to become an Uttamadakari and therefore candidate for associating with Krishna and Krishna Loka, meaning back to home, back to God in. Well, that back to home, back to Godhead, you have to become an Uttamadakari. Otherwise, what are, we, what are you going back to Godhead for? Right. A tourist? You want to sit there and have a picnic on the lawn <laughs> watching gopis dancing around you? <laughs> right, right. No, you have to be part of it. How do you become part of it? You have to be one of them. How do you become one of them? You have to be so pleasing that they want you. They have to want you to be there, not that you want to be there. Anybody who wants to go back to Godhead is an absolute idiot. 
so we can leave it to krishna how many left times or uh, you know happen before we go back to krishna it's why stretch it to 100 left times why do we need to stretch it to 100 left times or so krishna is not involved yeah it's up you're going back to godhead has nothing to do with krishna it has to do with you no it's, it's when krishna says you're ready to come you can go no he doesn't come. say you're ready you can enter the spiritual world when you when you act, when he rolls when he rolls up the curtain of maya and says uh, yeah. i want you to be here so yeah that's, but that's a, after you have made yourself so desirable to krishna that he can't stand you not being there yeah that's what that's when i'm talking you about you to be his friend or whatever your role is in krishna loka he wants you to be the guy's friend in in krishna loka so that can happen, happen in, until in he, any in any goes, he has to become completely unhappy if you're not there hmm it has nothing to do with what you want so that can happen in any any x number of lifetimes why do we need to fix a number stretch it to 100 lifetimes or to 150 lifetimes because it's very difficult to achieve the start the platform of uttama adhikari how many lifetimes do you think it will take Last well, it could, it could take three. It could take five. It could take ten. Why stretch it to it more than hundred? It can take two minutes or two seconds right now. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Do it. Two seconds. <laughs> now go back to God. No, maybe not for me. It didn't happen for me. <laughs> no, not me either. So the thing is, for us to understand what to do, we have to see the process. <clears throat> now look, when you see the process. already you are in some Jai, part of the kanista auditory platform right let's say we're probably all of us are probably in the lower eighth or quarter of the kanista auditory platform it it it's a, it can become very sophisticated the way to bring ourselves up to the higher part of the kanista auditory platform and when we bring ourselves up higher to the sadhakari platform how many lives will it take until you're no longer interested in getting married you're no longer interested and I'll be by being gay uh how long will it take before you want to be part of a social situation and the kid is sadhakari is in the adi avalasavic it is a totally social sociological and uh all meaning in the adiyavala subij is your status within the society now how does that differ from this god everything depends on your status within the society and it's not based on the jiva it's based on your body and your mind so it means it's not based on enlightenment it's based on position largely governed by piety good karma but karma action and reaction so if you have good karma and you don't have any big anarthas you can become an indiscon initiator until you decide to quit because your bad karma caught up with you question yes Hi. Yeah. So the in the spiritual world with Krishna, it's yes. it's kind of an unlimited uh, population there. Totally unlimited. Infinite Total unlimited. population. And uh, each one has got a personal re- relation with Krishna. Of course. It says that's mind under body. yoga maya. Remember you do remember yoga maya? Yoga maya is that which determines your relationship with Krishna differentiated from somebody else's relationship with Krishna. Prabhupada gave the example that 
Mother Yasoda would be very distressed if she thought that her little blue boy is out dancing with other people's wives in the forest of, of Vrindavan. She would not be happy. So that yoga maya keeps her from knowing or seeing it. <coughs> she may have rumors of it. She may hear about it. But it's sort of like mothers hear all sorts of things and they only pay attention to the thing, the thing that they think is the most important. So if Krishna is having dancing with gopis uh, in the, at the full moon, then Mother Yasoda doesn't really bother herself by knowing about it. And that's ah, because of Yoga so Maya. If it was like an ordinary, you, you got the point. If, if it's like an ordinary person, she said, my little boy's out there dancing with those women. I'm going to go out and whoop his butt. That's what it would do normally. But yoga makes it possible for everyone to have their own relationship with Krishna, although the relationships interact. You know that song, Bhaja Bhakka Bhata, Jala Chi Jigora Hari, Chi Gora Hari, Soi Gostave Hari. You know that song, right? Shri Gora Hari, Soi Gostave Hari, Nanda Yasura Bhati Chi Hari. Bello, hello, damo, zara, ase, kana. I'm butchering Bengali. But These um, bhajans are in I apologize on for revelation. Yeah, on he may have come to work. So the thing is that, um, but you get the point. It's a whole song about Krishna's different process with different uh, jivas in Krishna Loka. Okay. Ah, so I'd like to shift gears now. Uh, any more questions regarding the direction of management? It's like 11 o'clock, so I think we should end it. And, uh, or unless, go ahead, Chida. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, just a question about the 10,000 uh, association, 10,000 okay. association. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So that it, was it a won't be like... question also. Okay. We don't, we don't... So realistically, Based upon your present day consciousness, I don't mean the number of years you've been in ISKCON or the number of years since you heard about Krishna's holy name or took initiation from an ISKCON initiator. Okay, initiator. I would like to ask, how long do you think realistically before you will reach the professional stage based on your conscious moment by moment, step by step, progress. I'm not talking about magic. I'm talking about what you're experiencing right now leading to you being an Uttama Adhikari. Be your advanced. I worship your lotus feet, quite frankly. But wouldn't you say there's a million miles ahead? Definitely. For me, at least. Okay. So, <laughs> which is further? A million miles or 10,000 years? That's the big question, isn't it? The question so, was about uh, the 10,000 association. Well, it was one of, it, it, it won't be like an organized religion. This is very different. Is it? Uh, no. The, no, no, we're just, a, we're just a, it's just like a sannyasi can be, a sannyasi is a member of this kind, brahmachari. We, we are in the, uh, we are, as our private business, we are in the, 10,000 year association. It's like being a member of the, uh, what you call them, Masons, Freemasons. You get different degrees, 32 degrees of Masons. And each one has a separate initiation. It's all mystical practices. As a complete, each level has a completely different way of understanding how they are Masons as they go. Well, the Masons apparently came from ancient Egypt, from Ra. You know, and ISIS, not the current ISIS, but the ISIS of ancient Egypt, Osiris. And when we are 
in this 10,000 year association, we don't cease to be brahmacharis or sannyasis or householders. We don't cease to be uh, brahmins if we take initiation that's a brahmin. We don't cease to be take that. We don't cease to be anything. We just have a pledge that we're going to stay here for 10,000 years until everybody has been delivered uh, from planet Earth. All the jivas have been transformed. And we have to take into account that when we start chanting in the first thousand years, uh, that a lot of entities that hear us chanting will be germs, insects, parasites in our own bodies and stuff like that. And then the next year, next thousand years, next hundred years after that, many of those insects will have become devotees. They become human and devotees. And after that, you see, it'll keep on going. I believe Prabhupada mentioned somewhere, and I think that Ramachandra read it somewhere, that there will be millions of devotees at the end of the golden age of Kali. So why can't they why can't we make it right now? All the gem, all the gems devotees. Well why not? Go ahead. Can you make everybody Krishna conscious yourself tomorrow, Manu, in the whole world? We are planning for the insects? next 10,000 years. So no, I'm just for one, one day. And if you don't like 10,000 years, then why do it in one day? That doesn't matter. You can do what you like. You can do what you can, I should say. I mean, so everybody can, can have his own. Everybody can have his own way of doing things. No need for organizing. Well, everyone can have his own everything. But in the end, you have to become an Uttamadakari to go back to Godhead. So the yeah, 10, that, is all, that is accepted by all, everyone here. The 10,000 year association simply means people that are committed to becoming pure devotees, consciously endeavoring that. And that they will, once becoming pure devotees, instead of going to Krishna Loka, they will want to associate with each other here while delivering so, the fallen souls, which will be... Does that mean we have all calculated, we have all calculated, all the, all the persons in the group have calculated and come to a fixed number that uh, so, so 100 years, 100 lifetimes is the time I'm going oh, to go whatever. back to 10,000 10, years, actually 9,500 years, Calculate it, how long it will take for before you become a pure devotee. And once you're a pure devotee, you will no longer want to go back to Godhead necessarily. In fact, you probably won't, not in this group, because you'll want to deliver the fallen souls, which is why Lord Chaitanya came here. Why do you we want to go back to Godhead when Lord Chaitanya came here in order that we would bring everyone back to Godhead, not just ourselves? You see, that selfishness, that greed of our own hearts. I want salvation for me. I want to go back to Godhead and yeah. control When we came to ISKCON, when we what? came to ISKCON, the preaching was that no one wants to go back to Godhead. No one wants to associate with God. No one wants to come to the spiritual world. Uh, that, that's how the preaching was. Now they're saying, now you're saying, I want salvation. You don't, oh, why you, do you think, you're not here. Do I'll people, take salvation. Do people, do individual karmis join ISKCON because they don't want to go back to Godhead? And they do want to. Yes, that's my point. So is that a bad they thing? want. But Banu, let's get realistic. I'm not talking about joining the Boy Scouts or some abstract group of people or the Marines or whatever, Air Force. I'm talking about you and me here. Do we want to go back to Godhead? If the answer is yes, you want to go back to Godhead, right? No. Everybody. How long will it take? Yeah. We don't That's calculate it. It's Bhanu, not a calculation. You, you, the you, calculations you. would be changing Bhanu. every month, say you, after some Bhanu, do some you want few. to go back to Godhead, Bhanu? Let me let me make my point, Prabhu. Go ahead. I mean, uh, after after some days, after months, 
the calculation would be changing because the, the, the way we are progressing in the spiritual path, then the calculation would be changing, the number of years, lifetimes would be constantly changing. So we can't yeah. make a fixed number. Correct. But the fixed number is the number of years, not really our, our progress. We could live to be 20 years old. We could live to be 500 years old. We don't know. Right now, we live to be what, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, something like that. That's all we can live in the body. The body. Arable. We can say like this, like, um, say uh, we could uh, um, intend that we want to take birth for this many thousands of years. But um, if Krishna so happens to want us to come back to him, then, of course, uh, we, we take that. But like... like um, you can take that when, you, when Krishna finds you irresistible. Right, exactly what I mean. Exactly See, what I everybody mean. Everybody says so. Krishna will take us back to him. Well, why would, why would Krishna want to do that? Put right. it this way. You are part and parcel of Krishna, as are all of us here. I am part and parcel of Krishna. You're part and parcel of Krishna. Why would Krishna want to take part and parcel, his part and parcel, back to Godhead without any reason? What I, I guess um, what I'm saying is like uh, in terms of um, reestablishing our spiritual body. To a satisfactory extent, uh, so that uh, Krishna finds us un irresistible. Um, yeah. uh, otherwise, we're we're sticking to the vow of um, taking births for the purpose of uh, helping other souls to go back to Godhead. Well, I, 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 I agree with you, but I see it slightly differently from me saying we are wanting to become Uttamadakaris because we all want to go back to Godhead. Nara and I just come here and raised a troubling question. How, how, did, how do you do it? How do you go back to God? It's I mean, a, it's, you know, once it's, a, each, it's clearly stated by Prabhupada, but nobody reads it. Nobody cares because they all think it's salvation like Christianity. Go ahead. No. Anyone who becomes Uttamadhikari, he would, um, he would surely be delivering thousands, hundreds, whatever amount of people. That would be a natural process, but how, natural thing how for him you to become, do. What, is, what do you do to be, what do you have to do to become an Uttamadhikari? One. No, that, that I ask you, what would it, what, what should I do to become a Madhyamadhikari? I didn't get an answer. Madhyamadhikari or an Uttamadhikari? First, I need to get to the Madhyamadhikari stage. You have to give up all material desire. Hmm. You can't become a Madhya Madhikari until you no longer have any material desire. Because if you have material desire, you'll act on it. Mm -hmm. Remember the four regulated principles are not just there, they're there for a reason. And the reason is people want to do those things. So if you don't get intoxicated with drugs or alcohol, you can get intoxicated with sweet ball juice, juice, juice. I mean, the desire to get out of your mind, change your consciousness by taking a substance, is there in every creature. Right? And sex life, people want it. You have to be completely free from sex desire to become a body of water curry. And, um, and of course, you know, the grosser things, for the lower conditions, they may still have a hankering to eat meat or something of that sort. Meat, fish, eggs, onions, garlic, poultry. Ah, so uh, we have Lakshmi Prabhu online after a couple really? of weeks. Really? Yes. No picture. To what do we, uh, uh, to what do we attribute our good fortune that Lakshmi has come here? Everybody wants to go to Narayan because Lakshmi is with Narayan. But Lakshmi has come here. 
She brought Narayan. He said, Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hi, it's so good to hear your voice again. We're, we're making astonishing Very strides nice. forward. Prabhu. How are ah. you? Ah. Thank Prabhu. <laughs> wow. Hare Hare Krishna. Oh, who, who's, is that your child? My sister's Niranjan. Wow. Your sister, that's your sister or your sister's child? Sister's My child. Sister? Yeah. She's your sister. Hare Krishna. No, sister's you are the child. Most beautiful. Sister's you are the most child. Beautiful Vaishnav Tilak. I am very honored very to meet nice. you. What is your name? Niranjan. Niranjan? Niranjan. Dasi. Niranjan Devi Dasi. <laughs> nice He's to meet speaking. you. <laughs> Prabhu. I am Narana, Narana Das. And I offer you not only... I, people say, well, you give me your blessing. I'll do better than that. I will give you Prabhupada's blessing. Die. I'll do even better than that. I'll give you Bhakti Siddhanta's blessing. <laughs> I'll, I'm I going back to Sampradaya. I'll give you Balaram's, Nityananda's uh, 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 blessing. And why no. stop at that point? I will give you Lord Chaitanya's blessing. Die. I'm still I'm still in LKG and uh, I'm not sure if I'm worthy of you know taking that blessings. But yeah, I'll always be a servant of servant of servant. Yeah. <laughs> So we have created a new, new or in the process of establishing a new association called the 10,000 year association. And we're having some doubts. We're having some debates about what it is and how it should go on and whether you're gonna have to carry a card that says that you're a member or what. But the main idea is that we are taking the vow that because Sometime in the next 10,000 years, we're here on planet Earth. We're not going anywhere from here uh, until we are Uttama Adhikaris, at which point, meaning pure devotees, like Prabhupada, which means then we can, if we choose, go back to Krishna Loka. However, the question arises, if going back to Krishna Loka is the objective, why didn't Prabhupada go back to Krishna Loka? He came here, not go there. He didn't become liberated in this lifetime with the idea of going back to Godhead. He came here if you're a devotee already, right? So we do agree. Okay, that's perfect. So then, supposing you become a pure devotee, like in the same vibrational range as Srila Prabhupada. Would you go back to Godhead? Or would you choose to stay here and bring everybody here on the planet back to Godhead for 10,000 years only? Besides which, with all respects to everyone, I suspect it will take more than one lifetime, two lifetimes, 10 lifetimes, maybe even 50 lifetimes to become a pure devotee. We don't know how long it will take. All we know is that it, just like, look at us here. We're experiencing pleasure. If we weren't experiencing pleasure, we wouldn't be on the Zoom call. Is that not true? You're experiencing pleasure, therefore you're on the Zoom call? Definitely, Jai. I mean, you yes. could be in the movies, right? Go to a movies right now, or you could go and play billiards or... or or tennis or something like that. But no, you're on the Zoom call. That means it must give you satisfaction. Is it true? Am I jumping it's or is that true? It's a different association. I'm sorry? It's a different true? association that we usually get. Yeah. But does it, give you a, does it give you some satisfaction to be on the Zoom call? Of course, of course. Ah. <laughs> We are learning many, learning well, how many. Long that, how long will we be having a Zoom call? Supposing we had <laughs> like the Zoom call or the equivalent of the Zoom call for 10,000 mm. years. 
would it be pleasurable? Only an Uttamadhikari can come in each lifetime and take a hundred births and be present and take it up. We don't know how many births we're going to take. And we don't know who's going to go back to Godhead before 10,000 years. But I will like to say, based upon my knowledge and association with and hearing directly also, as well as reading, of course, from Srila Prabhupada, is that the longer we stay here, birth after birth, and we're not going to go to Mars, we're going to be here next lifetime, right? And next life, next to yeah. We don't I'm know how many lifetimes. But what we do know. know is we'll be here up until 10,000 years. If, it's up, if we're here after 10,000 years, then we really made a big blunder. <laughs> because after 10,000 years, there will only be cannibals. And we'd have to be one of them. Either that or we'd be eaten. In which case, we wouldn't be there much long after 10,000 years. They see us, find us, kill us, roast us, eat us. And then they go on killing each other and eating each other. So it goes like that. For 10,000 years, we are in this golden age, meaning this is harvest time. This is like when you're out in the rice field or the, or the wheat field mowing the mowing or the hay field with a scythe cutting down the hay so you bundle it up to feed the cows. This, this activity we're doing is harvesting the golden age of Kali. We are benefiting from the golden age of Kali. And we're taking from the goodness of the golden age of Kali. Because by becoming devotees, we're gradually avoiding the horror that other people are rapidly zooming into, no pun intended, zooming into that has nothing to do with Krishna consciousness. That, what will happen to the lawyer who's walking his dog, taking cocaine, driving a Mercedes Benz or a Rolls Royce or Lamborghini. He's driving a or Maserati. He's there. He's cheating on his wife. He's got tons of money. He lives in Beverly Hills. What happens when he dies? Leaves everything. Yeah, he does not come back in the same level. Will he come back? <laughs> He's not a pure devotee. Therefore, we know one thing. He will be coming back. Right? He will come back. The question is, in what form? My suspicion is, dog. because I live in Los Angeles, where everybody seems to have a dog or more than one dog and walks them every morning. So how do we come back in the next 100 lifetimes as a, we are as a related? How do we get uh, related with uh, all of us? Well, I mean, should we get attached to each one let of me, us? Let, let me finish with this lawyer. He takes his next birth after spending his whole time. You know that people in Los Angeles are saying, women and men, are saying that they love their dogs more than they love their children. And it's not too surprising. Their children keep mm -hmm. on wanting things, demanding stuff, <laughs> fight with each other, do all sorts of nonsense, and do not necessarily drool over their parents, but the dog just sits there and gazes at you with worshipfully tongue hanging out, going, ha, 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 you know, being so happy, and you feed him a little bit of food, neuter the dog, and he doesn't even mind, apparently, and there, there, there you are, you have the perfect person. So they met people like the dogs better than their children. This is put right. in the newspapers, I will tell you that, or on TV, on yeah. the, on the mm -hmm. internet. Yeah. And so, just imagine at the time of death, what happens to that Beverly Hills lawyer? Becomes well, a dog. Not. Yeah. And somebody becomes <laughs> a dog walker. Uh, so, and walks God. him. And he doesn't know. He's not cheating on his wife because he's been neutered. <laughs> he doesn't be able to do anything about it. He's not even interested. So he 
just goes a eunuch dog and goes around uh, sniffing poopoos and sniffing peepees and offering poopoos and peepees to the grass and eating food and sniffing other dogs' hind ends and he's happy. So that's what happens to the Beverly Hills lawyer when he runs out of good karma. Of course, he may not run out of completely good karma, so he might end up being a Mexican gardener in his own, in the garden where he used to live before he died. He had a big house, big mansion, a lot of garden. Maybe he becomes a Mexican gardener and works there. But the Mexican gardener will go down too. Because he's doing nothing. Mm. No one is doing anything to go forward except those who have heard Harinam, 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 every cable of me. Kalu, but a stay, but a stay, but a stay, but a stay. I think we should end it at this point. It's 11 o'clock here, 11.13. Only okay. the holy name. Good night. Yeah, but Lakshmi was saying something. Everybody was saying something. What? Are you sure we can't go on for five more minutes? Uh, it's up to the viewers if they have any questions or we, we well, can. Were they, were uh, they Mataji they Lakshmi, well, you where, know, where are you Banu from? Well, had a question and I, I think that Chidananda, everyone's thinking the same thing, which is, why 10,000 years? Well, it'll, th let me finish that one thought. We are here now. We have heard from Lord Chaitanya. Whether we know it or not, we have been given the responsibility of delivering everybody else. Right? And Lord Chaitanya said, wherever you go, whomever you meet, the blue speak of Krishna. Like Krishna yeah. So if we, if we are doing that, then that means when do we stop? We said, well, I'll do it for a while and then I'll stop. Never and go back to Godhead. No, you do it for a while, then do it some more. Birth after birth. God. Until you become spiritually perfected. It will not be done in one lifetime except by some sort of miracle. Prabhupada said, you can be standing there expecting maybe I will get an honorary degree from Harvard yeah. or from Oxford or from IT. I will get an honorary degree. He said that could happen, but don't count on it. If you want to get a degree from Harvard, you go there and study for six years. Otherwise, you won't get the degree. So if you want to become an Uttamadakari, you have to cover the curriculum. It is a curriculum. The curriculum we is going from a gross, sinful person on planet Earth, ordinary guy, walking in the streets, chewing gum, smoking a cigar, smoking pot, uh, taking cocaine, wearing carby clothes, eating meat, cows, and whatnot, to becoming an Uttamadakari. It's quite a journey in between those two don't things, don't you think? So, Ah, that my I point to... is, it will take more than it will take a certain period of. It, well, Prabhupada told me when I asked him, I was in his room and I said, Prabhupada, can I ever become a pure devotee just like you? And he walked back and forth, chanting. He said, Why not? He said, You're in the process. It may take some time. And he walked back and forth a few times and said, But it may, yeah. it, but it may take some time. He also said, uh, pro, you all, so you I asked him. That. It will take some time. Prabhupada, I'm not it's trying very to go difficult. back to God in the end of this lifetime because it's not possible. Go ahead. You said, uh, you asked Prabhupada that, uh, Prabhupada, it's very difficult to become a pure devotee. He said, no, oh, it's yeah. very easy. Uh, oh, Prabhupada. No. Yes, it's very difficult to become a pure devotee just like you. And Prabhupada said, difficult, he said, with his eyes shot open. It's easy. But try to understand, it's not in terms of easy, in terms of time. Remember, Banu, how does time exist in the spiritual world? There's no time. It doesn't exist. In it fact, Krishna exist. says, time I am the destroyer of all things. Mm -hmm. Right? So if time I am the destroyer of all things, 
then time doesn't exist where Krishna exists. Okay. So, for us to worry about time means we are committed to not being spiritual. The minute we give up time, then we can begin to make some spiritual advancement. So, so why put a timeline on it? Why can't we say how many, whatever lifetimes we take will be involved in this Krishna consciousness? Okay. Progression let, let, me give you a, let me give you a, a hypothesis for a theory uh, to deal with it. We're in 10,000, we have 9,500 years to go in the 10,000 years of the golden age of Kali, Kali starting as we established a few nights ago from Lord Chaitanya. So as we are going back to Godhead in that process, chanting Hare Krishna, uh, this will be te- a 10,000 year span. What makes you think that Lord Chaitanya has any intention of us going back to Krishna Loka before we've delivered everybody on earth? Specifically, he asked us to do it. So, can I share something on the screen? Yes. I need to get permission to share the screen. From Ramachandra Prabhu. Uh, One second, let's see. Uh, screen sharing. I don't think he can. Okay, go ahead. Can Madam Prabhu. Yes, oh. you're good. Okay. Who's talking? It's Hare Prabhu. Krishna. Bhanu Prabhu wants to share something. Go ahead, Bhanu Prabhu. Bhanu Bhanu Prabhu. Okay, good. Okay, just one. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Let's we'll it ended because it's taking, uh, you know, it's been going on for two hours and uh, so we've been going on for two hours and three minutes. This one is the yeah. before all. So we're in a very important juncture in the conversation, which is establishing it's when we t- took, when we take initiation, are we signing up to leave the planet or are we signing up to deliver the fallen souls from the planet? So it's a conversation we read Okay, go ahead, also. Manu Prabhu. Go ahead. Are we signing up Prabhu. to leave or signing up to deliver others? What so did Lord Chaitanya want um, us to do? Didn't he make it pretty clear? We are so self-centered and body conscious that we think it's all about us leaving the planet. But did Lord Chaitanya say anything like that? Or did he I mean, encourage he has us a conversation between Prabhupada and Krishna. Hare Krishna? If we engage everyone in chanting Hare Krishna, at what point should we stop? No stop. Well, there you go. Till liberation. So it's a Prabhupada. So what is the document, uh, Prabhupada? So okay. it's Prabhupada saying, I have so many places, palaces oh, all over the world that I can stay in. Practically speaking, there's no difference between the Goswamis and me in terms of our lifestyle. They stayed under a different tree every night. I stay in a different palace every night. They wrote, I wrote, I write. Originally, I did not want to come here. He was talking, not coming to the America. He was not talking about coming to America, but to this world. He said, Krishna asked, I want you to write those books. Come down and write those books. Prabhupada said to Krishna, but I don't Mm. want to go to this material world. Krishna said, don't worry, I'll take care of everything. You write those books. So even Prabhupada didn't want to come to this material world, but Krishna forced him to come. Now, wait a second. Isn't this a quote from a memory by Bhavananda? Siddhanta Dasa. Anakdeots of a modern day saint. Siddhanta is so glad to wrote it down. Yeah, this is Bhavananda. This is Bhavananda. Do you trust? Do you believe that Bhavananda told the truth when he said that? Bhavananda is. We cannot. We cannot know about Bhavananda. Well, one thing we can know is that Bhavananda is one of the people who poisoned Prabhupada. And he's a pedophile. He actually administered poison to Prabhupada. I think Bhavananda. Do we? How do we trust him with our life? (laughs) No way. Well, no, we don't right trust now. what uh, I mean. I don't his think he says is, that. But he was. I don't think Prabhupada 
Krishna said that to Prabhupada. I honestly don't. I want you to write those books. Come down and write those books. No. There was nothing that Prabhupada ever said. He indicated that he would, that he planned to write those books. He was told by his spiritual master to spread Krishna consciousness in the English language, which means writing books. And that's not that he was told by Krishna to write those, those, using the word those books. I want you to write those books. Come down and write those books. I let it go the first time I heard it, but I, I was Bhavananda's mentor for two years. Mm -hmm. And I don't, didn't trust him then, and why should I trust him now? No, so so do we? So let's dismiss, forget about him. So we dismiss everything what Bhavananda says. Can't he? Is he? So no, he did some no, bad course. things. If, if Bhavananda sticks his hand out the window and says it seems to be raining, I would say there's a fifty percent chance it's probably raining. <laughs> Let's forget about Bhavananda. <laughs> okay, I think we're at a crucial point that we should end it here now. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, well, okay. anyhow, but uh, may I say one last thing? Are bold. Go ahead, please. Now, and that is, I think if we choose to recognize it, we hit a juncture point that Lord Chaitanya didn't tell us. To go back to Godhead, he told us to preach to others. Lord Chaitanya, he uh, delivered everyone, all the associates. Yes, everyone. They, they, everyone went back to Godhead by, by, no, then, no. by then itself. It said in Shastra, 10% will become Krishna conscious in the golden age of Kali. 10%. And Prabhupada told me personally, if you chant, why not 100%? percent So that means yeah. there is room to grow. It's not that automatically anything. Automatically, everyone's going back to Godhead, even if they're eating cows. No, that's not automatically going back to Godhead. No, not automatically. So you, did you I say, well, why not? If everyone's going back, then the people eating cows are going to go back. No, the ones that are not eating cows can learn how to chant Hare Krishna and, and follow the four regulated principles, and they will be able to bring everyone back to Godhead in the process of becoming Uttamadakaris. Fair enough. Banu wants to go back to Godhead now. Have a holy day only. He's not dead. Ronald yet. wants to holy burn the fire of preaching. <laughs> burn yeah. the forest. How would you like to be so intoxicated with preaching that you've read the Chaitanya Charitamrita? Yes. Look at Church would, India getting together with the associations. I would also preach like fire, Prabhu. He would go to the like fire burning. What? I would like to preach like fire burning the forest. But let me become an Uttamadhikari first before I preach. No, no. And preach, turn everyone no, into, no. Everyone you into have, devotees. You cannot become an Uttamadhikari without preaching first. First preach. You have to work now. Work. Manu doesn't work like before. to work. What I'm <laughs> saying is, work, what I think I will after. guarantee you, I will promise you, I guarantee, once you have become an Uttamadakari, you will want to stay here on planet Earth and serve Lord Chaitanya by delivering the fallen souls until the end Aribo. of the years. Ramachanda wants to go to the sleep now. That's your association, because we'll stay here <laughs> voluntarily, not prisoners, not because we could, we're too stupid to become Uttamadakaris, because we want to stay here and deliver the fallen souls. Because by that time, you and me and everyone, we will have such a spiritual rapport. We'll love to be in each other's association instead of saying it's time to go all the time. Time to get up and it's a Zoom call. It's late. You have to quit now. Uh, instead of saying that, we'll say, let's go on forever. Ty. Anyhow, I agree. It's time to go. I just wanted to make that final point because it's a point which, which astonishingly perhaps to you, I didn't think of before tonight, and it hit me like a ton of bricks, and it seems so unbelievably on, obvious that Lord Chaitanya is delivering us so that we will deliver others until the end of the golden age of Kali. Chai. 
Uh, yeah, oh, think of something else. Do that, and if you're going to go back to Godhead sooner, you will. Jai, okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Jai, of course. Manu, you're amazing. You're making so much at spiritual events, but I can't even measure it. Manu will go back to Godhead tomorrow. Hare Krishna. No, he, that means he's going to die in his sleep. I know. <laughs> 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 no, Bhavan is going to live. Did, did, did Lakshmi leave? She's there, but she's on mute. 